I'd like to share with you one of the most influential soundtracks of my life so far. It's shaped the way I listen, analyze, and compose music, and I thought it would really deserve some greater recognition in the world of video game music. This is my deep dive into... I honestly think it's safe to say that the legacy of Super Mario Galaxy would not be the same if not for its spectacular soundtrack. If you're unfamiliar with the music of this series, composer-orchestrator Mahiro Yokota originally wanted the game to have a Latin American style of music and even had composed 28 tracks in that style. However, sound supervisor Koji Kondo rejected that idea, causing Yokota to nearly resign from his job. However, Kondo insisted that he try again and think of Mario as cool rather than cute. Three months later, Yakota returned with three different styles of music, one orchestral, one poppy, and the last a mixture of orchestral and pop. Producer and designer Shigeru Miyamoto chose the orchestral piece as he found it sounded the most space-like. This led to the soundtrack containing mostly orchestral music, with a 50-piece orchestra performing these pieces. Some of them became instant classics, instantly recognizable to any Nintendo fan, and we're going to cover some of these right here today. The title screen opens with the Super Mario Galaxy hook, a six-note melody constructed by the first five notes of the E-flat major scale. The only exception to this is the fourth note of the theme, an A natural, which implies the Lydian mode, commonly used for adventurous and uplifting music. The melody begins on the dominant note of the scale, or B-flat, rises up a perfect fourth to the tonic note of E-flat, then rises up a perfect fifth to the next B-flat. This is a very powerful way to introduce any melody, especially because stressing the dominant note in a scale emphasizes the distance between the tonic and the dominant. Following this, the B-flat drops down a semitone to the A natural, and the chord changes to an F major over E-flat, or F7 in third inversion. The A natural then drops down a third to the root of the chord, which is F, before rising back up to rest on the third of the tonic chord, or G. As you can hear, there is nothing super innovative here, but the intent is clear, a catchy and memorable hook that is instantly recognizable by any fan. Following this, the harmony drops down to D-flat in the bass, then to a B major 7 chord. Notice that this new chord is no longer diatonic to E-flat major and provides the appropriate backdrop to a change in arrangement and instrumentation. A solo piano and harp play the hook, but much slower now, and are heavily dripping with reverb. In addition to this, a unique synthesized sound effect comes in on every Lydian chord, teasing the listener and hinting that the soundtrack will also contain some electronic elements. In terms of the harmony, we shift up from B major up to D major, which is a minor third away and a chromatic median. This allows the spacey feel to become even more adventurous. Finally, the harmony rises to E major, then to F sharp major, which is the dominant chord of our original key, B major. The theme then loops infinitely until you decide to start the game. As you can hear, there are already some very interesting devices going on here. This really serves to set and enhance the game's atmosphere, allowing the gamer to become immersed in the playing experience. The game opens with Star Festival, where Mario is free to roam around a guided path to Princess Peach's castle. With stars lighting up and star bits, the game's currency, falling from the sky, the music appropriately is lighthearted, fun, and adventurous. This piece uses a mixture of orchestral instrumentation and synthesized sounds, with a solo flute and strings doubling the synthesized sound in the melody for extra strength. The accompaniment features short strings playing a 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 type of pattern that establishes comfortability, predictability, and really supports the main theme. Bonus points for being an E major, my personal favorite key.
All in all, the live orchestration recorded in a concert hall gives the music a spacious, larger than life and cinematic feel that really makes us feel like we can do anything. It's really the perfect opener. Later, when Mario gains the ability to spin, he gets his first real taste of adventure. His mission is to collect different parts of a broken star so it can reassemble and launch him to the next planet. Along with other small missions, this piece gives the gamer a real sense of adventure with its lush strings, flute trills, and brass stabs. While the piece is in A-flat Lydian and the melody makes sure to show that, the harmonic structure is really what sets the tone here. The pedal tone of C serves as the bed for the first few chords of B-flat major, which resolves to A-flat major. This is interesting because C is not the root note of either one of those chords, so we immediately feel like we're on our toes and there's something waiting for us up ahead. The bass note then moves to D flat, which now is the root note of the D flat major chord. Following this, the bass goes back down to C, then descends a fifth to F, E natural, E flat, D flat, and finally back to C, our main pedal tone. These pedal tones, which eventually move, deliver a feeling of suspense and then release. Very effective in this setting where the gamer has to figure out what to do in order to progress in this level. Ah, the good old Good Egg Galaxy. If the title theme introduced the game and Star Festival introduced the story, the music of Good Egg Galaxy introduces the world. This stunning orchestral piece is grandiose and very thematic. Written in a three-part structure of ABC before looping back to the beginning, the music begins as soon as Mario lands on the planet, with the trumpets, horns, and trombones blaring, and the strings performing a beautiful crescendo to round off the intro. The main theme of this galaxy is very simple, played in the violins with lower strings, a sixth below for added color. All the while, the pedal tone of C grounds us in the very key of the piece, so the melody seems a little more distant in comparison. In the B section, or the bridge, the flute makes a return, singing a gorgeous lyrical melody with a hint of vibrato. The chord structure is C major, D major, D major, back to C major, and then C major, D major, F minor, and C major. Now this F minor chord is the minor 4 chord in C major, bringing about an unexpected pining quality found in the parallel minor of C minor. By the way, up to this point, the pedal tone or bass notes are still on C the entire time. In the second half of this B section, the harmony now departs from the tonic leading the progression to F major, G major, E minor, and A major, which is the 4, 5, 3, and major 6 in C major. Finally, a D7 chord leads up a half step to E flat 7 before going to G7 and finally resolving to C. You can really hear how all of these chords in a short amount of time really contrast with the relatively bare harmonic information of the A section. In the C section, or the chorus, the melody is interspersed with steps and leaps, with the steps making the melody easily singable and the leaps providing emotion and passion. The harmonic language also introduces the flat 6 and flat 7 chords, A flat and B flat major, allowing the bass line to descend by half step to the dominant before resolving back to C.
this theme is then repeated up an octave for extra memorability and gives us a sense of reaching out to the sky. As you can see, the soundtrack of Good at Galaxy checks all the boxes for a memorable theme. Simplicity, repetition, and staying relatively diatonic with a few altered chords for added interest. The area where Mario can explore the various galaxies through a telescope and just relax is suitably accompanied by a waltzy theme. This theme is particularly interesting because there are actually three different versions depending on your progress and completion of the game. We'll focus on the second and third versions, which take a basic theme and add additional instrumentation on top. Version 2 opens with a lush intro, followed by a beautiful melody in the violins, filled with skips and leaps similar to a dancing ballerina. Meanwhile, the woodwinds play light staccato chords on beats 2 and 3, adding a light touch and sparkle to the arrangement. The theme is then repeated, this time with a flute layered in an octave above, and Celli performing counter melodies for additional movement and interest, as well as filling in any harmonic holes that may be present. The following bridge is also very light, starting on the 4 chord and resolving to the tonic before arriving at the dominant chord to set up the return back to the top. Version 3 is similarly gorgeous, with the structure of the piece being identical to versions 1 and 2, but with additional instrumentation. The A section brings in the flute right at the beginning to play counter melody, while the second half of the theme introduces a bassoon and French horn to fill out the mid-range. The B section now has the flute and the harp playing the first half of the melody instead of the violins, with a clarinet responding in turn. The oboe then takes over the melody before the entire orchestra performs the crescendo back to the beginning of the piece. Looking at the overall setting of this observatory, the composers could have decided to go with a more sci-fi or electronic genre, but the choice to use the orchestra for a waltz is a callback to the likes of Strauss, Chopin, and Brahms, and it leaves us with a feeling of fulfillment and sheer bliss. Space Junk Galaxy is a lovely piece of music that is very simple in nature and instrumentation, but again breaks out of traditional diatonic harmonies for some more interesting options. Especially in video game music and film scores, composers have the option to use modes for added color, and this piece is no exception. Rooted in the tonal center of A flat, the piano melody outlines the Lydian mode with the D natural as the third note. Have a listen.
This provides an uplifting and outerworldly feel and proves you don't really need the harmony to be altered for this to work. When the harmonic progression does change, however, it dips down to G flat major, hinting at the mixolydian mode or simply borrowing the seventh chord from the parallel minor. We finally get the classic Nintendo resolution of flat 6, flat 7 to 1, confirming that we truly are using the chords from the parallel minor. In predictable fashion, the entire theme is repeated, this time with a piano playing up an octave for more expression and lift, while a tinkling synth repeats each phrase as a counter melody, giving us the classic call and response. The bridge is again much lighter in nature, alternating between the A major and B major chords for a brighter color in comparison to the darker A flat major before opening up to the alternating D flat and E flat major chords, signifying the return of the flat keys. Following this, the E flat major chord adds a major seventh, adding a slightly jazzy flavor to the soundtrack before light broken chords make their way back to the top of the piece. This is just a simple example of how Nintendo uses modes and modal mixture in the context of a single piece, and I hope you would agree that it's much more interesting than going to the safer route and sticking with a major scale the entire time. Picking up the pace once again, Boy Base Galaxy's music is one of the more unique standouts of the game due to its hybrid and military feel, as well as being in a Phrygian mode. The characteristic sound in this mode is the flat 2 chord or F major in this case, as this piece is in E Phrygian. It opens with an arpeggiated suspended chord over an alternating E and F bass line, reminiscent of the Jaws main theme. Brass then enter to play a heroic theme, joined by the trumpets later to reinforce the strength and body of the melody. Meanwhile, the snare drum and strings chug along in the background to maintain the military feel. The bridge modulates to A major, which in turn causes the F major chord to be the flat 6 chord in the key. It's followed by the G major chord or the flat 7, and finally back to 1 or A major, which we now know as the classic Nintendo chord progression. The strings then come in to round off the bridge with a powerful theme before the trumpets introduce the C section and the strings bring us back to E Phrygian.
the while, you can really hear how the synth textures perform counter melodies in between each melodic statement to maintain the listener's attention. All in all, this galaxy features a powerful piece of music that really stands out among the pack for its strong military feel. If you asked any Galaxy fan about the first piece of music that pops into mind when they think of Super Mario Galaxy, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't say Gusty Garden. And for good reason. Not only is this galaxy gorgeous, bright, and just plain fun, but the soundtrack features one of the most beautiful melodies you'll ever hear in any game, let alone in the world of music. Performed by the Super Mario Galaxy Orchestra, the dynamics, passion, and balance between the instruments is just perfect. The piece opens with a classic flat 6, flat 7 to 1 chord progression in D flat major. While the chord progression is now to be expected, the choice of D flat or C sharp major really gives us a rich color that you don't really get from a neutral key like C major. The combination of the full brass section and the harp glissando into the downbeat gives the listener an instant joyful feeling. The theme begins with a classic combo of violins and oboe, a very common way to provide extra body to the overall string sound. As a casual listener, you'll already be tempted to sing along, which is very easy given the natural contour and rhythmic pattern of the melody. As the theme repeats, the second violins join in the melody an octave higher, again as a way to increase excitement and power in the higher registers. The trumpets then reinforce this texture in the second half of the melody to provide that full-bodied orchestral sound, while the strumming guitar and low strings perform a rhythmic pattern that supports the main melody instead of disrupting it. This is an extremely important orchestration concept to understand. The ear can only focus on one thing at a time, so the arrangement must be orchestrated in a way that brings out the best in the music at any particular moment. In this case, the melody is king. The other thing I'd like to point out is the return of the Lydian mode, with an E flat major chord in the harmony and the violin stressing that raised fourth, or G natural. As you know, this mode really lifts everything up and gives us that emotional high. Not sure if there's a better way to put that. The bridge features a solo trumpet over an alternating B minor to D flat major progression, contrasting with the previously happy tone. As the harmony begins its descent, the trumpet melody raises in register, hinting that the energy is now being built back up, a classic device to lead into the next section. This is further amplified by the addition of the French horns, trombones, and the rest of the trumpet section. The C section contains the melody we all know and love. It begins on the supertonic before resolving down a step to the tonic, followed by a drop down to the dominant before repeating this supertonic to tonic resolution. This implies the tonic chord while the basses rise from D flat up to F, turning the chord into first inversion. It then goes to G flat major or the four chord before turning into the dominant seventh in third inversion or A flat over G flat. In essence, the bass line stays the same but the orchestration in the mid-range changes to reflect this chord shift. Meanwhile, the melody rises from A flat up to F, then resolves down to E flat. The harmonic progression is then as follows: 3, 6, flat 7, 5, 6, 4 to 5, 7, and finally to 1. The 3 to 6 movement is common in all sorts of classical pop and film music, and the rise to the flat 7 or B major hints that we might be resolving straight to the 1 chord. 
However, it does go back down to the dominant before rising up to the tonic, creating a perfect cadence. The melody perfectly accompanies this by outlining these chords in a beautiful way that is also visually appealing, sort of like decreasing slopes that make it quite easy to follow along with and sing. As the theme repeats, the bass line steps down the scale from tonic to subdominant, or from scale degree 1 down to 4, then down to the 3, rising up to the 6th, flat 7, and again back down to 5 before resolving to 1. So very similar to what we just heard, but with a little bit of extra movement to signify that this is the climax of the entire piece. In the melody, the trumpets and horns have joined the strings to thicken the texture and bring the music to a grand finish. This is one of those pieces that really shape the way that I compose, listen to, and appreciate orchestral music, and I hope it has a similar effect on you. The music of Super Mario Galaxy is simply a masterpiece. The decision to go with an orchestral sound instead of an electronic one takes the game to a new level and really instills the player with a sense of adventure and heroism. Nintendo has always placed a special emphasis on its music, and in my opinion, very few soundtracks can match the catchy themes, intricate orchestration, and adventurous harmonies that Galaxy contains. I hope this video has been insightful, informative, and enjoyable. Before you go, please let me know in the comments below what your favorite piece in Super Mario Galaxy is and why it stands out to you. Is it the combination of the level and music, or something in the arrangement or melody that you really like? Just let me know and I'd love to start a conversation with you. In addition, I'd like to thank you for watching this video with a brand new guide going over 5 of the exact techniques that Disney and Nintendo composers use to create these stunning pieces of music. Not only do we discuss these techniques, but we practically take a few examples of my favorite pieces and identify exactly what the composer is doing in each piece. I really think it'll help you and I want you to have this and study it, so I've made it absolutely free to download. Just click the link in the description box and sign up to receive the guide. Thank you again so much for taking the time out of your extremely busy day to spend some time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.